Welcome to part 5 of my Parallax camera tutorial series. In this one I'll go over how you can create multiple images with different scroll screen speeds in the background. So if I hit play, and as you can see we've got like a sort of a grassy layer at the front, a um, mountain range in the middle and a mountain range in the background which is going at different scroll speeds. So uh, in this next part we'll go over how we can create this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is import my textures. So I've got a materials folder here. If you click on imports, and these are the three that I want to use as part of my parallax system. Um, I've already got them in, so I'm not going to re import them again. Um, you're welcome to use whatever textures you want, but for this tutorial purposes, I'm going to use these. So I've already got a parallax material here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that, I'm going to duplicate it, and in fact, we'll do it twice. Okay, I'm going to go into the first one, Parallax Material 1, click on the texture sample, change that one to the mountains back, hit apply, just quickly dock that as well, and then for Parallax Material 2, same again, only I'm going to call this one Grass 1. So for my textures it's two mountain ranges and basically a, a fake grass, which is just the green triangles, but it'll do for testing. Save all, and basically that's all three materials ready for the parallax camera. So the next part I'll show you how to set up the camera to take into account these three different layers. Okay, for the next part I'm going to set up my parallax camera. So I'm going to go into my viewport, and as you can see, there's already one plane set up here, but I want to add another two planes and then position them accordingly. So there's a little trick here, rather than dropping. A new plane randomly and having to reset it you can pretty much just highlight the plane in the window here the components select plane and what it will do is it will actually position it in the same rotation and in the same position as the other one so all you need to do then is unparent it and then you can rinse and repeat for the next one so Add another component, another plane, and as you can see here, it's, it's dragged it in the exact same spot, so it saves having to keep manually adjusting it, just uh, something worth uh, keeping an eye on. So, obviously, I've got my two planes here, I'm not going to really call them anything else, just for the sake of you know, pure reason. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one to parallax material one and I'm going to move its position so it's behind the other one and this one I'm going to adjust its material to be the parallax material too. Compile save, so if I hit play you can pretty much see them there but obviously there's no parallax effect happening yet so in the next part I'll show you how to add the parallax to these uh, two new uh, planes Okay, so now that we've got the planes that we want, it's time to add the code um, so that we can achieve the parallax effect. So I'm going to go into the event graph, and you'll see here that we've got create a dynamic material instance along with material ID. So it's going to be a case of hold control, drag plane one in. Oh, and plane one two is automatically defaulted in as well. That's handy. So. Control W to copy that. Change that to Parallax Material 1. And you just cross reference and make sure it's the right material. And you'll soon know if you find it, if you hit play and a different material appears. Connect Plane 2 to that. And then that's Parallax Material 2. Right click on this node, promote to variable. And I'm going to call this mid 2. Promote this one to variable, and then we call this mid three. Now it's a bit, um, a bit untidy, but I'm not too concerned at this point. It's going to connect these up this way, and then connect it to the original view target with blend, so that it basically the camera teleports and it uh, it follows the play. Hit compile, save. And basically these planes now have access to the material IDs so that we can set the individual offsets on each one. 
so that'll be up in the next part. So finally what we need to do is we need to change the offset values in each of these materials. So what we need to do is we need to scroll down. We want the section here where we're originally getting the current offset and then setting it just for the material ID um, for one. So what we need to do is set it for two and three as well. So I'm going to drag these in individually. I'm going to select this set, uh, scalar parameter value copy it twice and then I'm going to connect these up okay so what we need to do is we need to get this current offset copy it again but this time what we need to do is we need to obviously give the current offset a different value for each layer so for material ID 2 which was for plain 1 that needs to be a lot slower, but we'll obviously we can, we'll soon see the results. So I'm going to hit a multiply there. Oh, wrong time. I want to multiply by a float, it's not a vector. So float times float. And I want to be 0.5, so it's half the current offset value. Select these nodes here, control. And material ID 3 is for the grass layer, so I want that to be a bit faster. I'm going to give that a 4 multiply. Connect that into the value. And the reason why I'm doing this is um, if you just plug that current offset in on its own, all the layers will scroll at the same time. So on the same tick, there must be some modifiers added to change that value. In this case, I'm just using um, magic numbers just for demonstration. Um, so what we'll do then is drag off the top one, connect that, connect that, and then just change it around a bit. It's not tidy, I know, but uh, like I say, it'll do for now for demonstration. So hit play, and there you go. As you can see, the four backgrounds layer is moving slower than the, the one which is in the middle, and the, the grass layer is moving a lot faster. So that brings us to the end of the tutorial, so um, I hope you find this useful, and if there's any problems or any questions, uh, feel free to answer in the comments below. Thank you for watching my video. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to my channel.